Welcome to the studio at Africa's Green Economy Summit. Today we are joined by Frank Mugienyi, who is the Chairman and Global Executive Director at Minerals Africa Development Institution. Welcome, Frank. Thank you for having me. Of course. So please talk to us a little bit about Africa's economic potential when it comes to building a localized value chain with its mineral resources. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's take it that Africa has got two key resources. We have the natural resources, and we have the youngest population in the entire world. <clears throat> that calls for innovation. That calls for creating value on the continent. So we have this, uh, what we think is a challenge of not being able to add value to our resources, uh, which actually becomes an opportunity for us. Because when you look at our youth population, they are innovative, they are creative, and all they require is investment into them. But you also rec recognize that it is difficult for one country to have the entire uh, integrated value chain in one country. So the, re the need to have uh, cross-border investments. Uh, we know and we have this slogan at our uh, Minos Africa Development Institution that minerals are borderless. So when you come from here and you go to Zimbabwe, you go to Tanzania, you go, you find the same minerals. So why is it difficult that Africa cannot have minerals mined in South Africa, value added in Tanzania on finished products in, in Zimbabwe according to a competitive advantage of that particular country? Mm. So we need to turn our comparative advantage, which we have in terms of mineral and natural resources, into the competitive advantage where we lower energy and production costs so that we can produce things cheaply and sell them on our continent. We stop importing things that we can produce and we produce, uh, produce them locally. That will spur manufacturing. Mm. And as you touched on a little bit, there are a lot of, of barriers that are stopping Africa from actually reaching its full potential. So what obstacles do you believe are stifling Africa's unique industrial opportunities? Um, and how can institutions like the MI, MADI take steps to change that? Fabulous. Number one, energy. So we talk about uh, transitioning, uh, the, world, the world is transitioning from into green energy, but Africa is not yet having even energy. So what are we green, uh, trans transitioning into? The major hurdle in us doing things is energy. But then we have an opportunity into that because again, when we come together, Give an example, if we are going to use the, uh, the traditional energy that we've been thinking about before we go to green technology, uh, Inga Dam in, in, in DRC. If it was to be finished today, the cost of grid energy would come to as low as one cent a kilowatt. Uh, why are my member states not putting in money? Why are we wasting for other people to come and put in the money? Is the question mark. That's where the, the challenge is, the political will. Uh, but when you come closer, then we are talking now about hydrogen, uh, green hydrogen. We've just been hearing uh, that it can actually be done uh, at a very low cost, reducing the time of producing it, which would have been 20 years and can be done in 18 months and it would be the cheapest. So there are opportunities. We have had uh, we have nuclear energy. We don't have to go into nuclear weapons, but we can create nuclear energy for our energy industrialization. So as I said at the, uh, during my, my panel, Africa has the potential to lead green industrial revolution. Mm. Mm. And in leading that green industrial revolution, what do you think are the latest solutions that uh, hold the greatest potential to fast track the deployment of a local battery value chain? Yeah, so like you asked me what uh, would an organization like uh, MAD, MADI do, mm -hmm. uh, we are a think tank, we are a social enterprise, but we, 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 uh, we pride ourselves in the, in the independence of thought. So we need to look at solutions that are African solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've been talking about EVs, and can we tap into the EV market of Europe? Is that where we want to go? Or can we produce batteries for our own consumption? 1.4 billion people, half of us don't have energy. You go to most of the countries, they are, have two wheelers, three wheelers. These could actually have batteries which don't have to go into the EVs of the world, but EVs of Africa. So we need to produce what we can consume, and the market is huge. Uh, in Uganda, where I come from, every the other person has got a motorcycle. They are border, called border borders. That's an opportunity. It's an economic chaos. You look see them on the streets, but when you look at that economic chaos, you do you see opportunities in there. Mm -hmm. So if you have to produce batteries for motorcycles, um, 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 batteries for, for solar that we need, solar batteries and so forth. This is where we want to go. So in terms of uh, producing for our economies, uh, we have 
um, resources. We have minerals that feed into that. Uh, we, uh, the rest of the world call them critical minerals. We call them strategic minerals because they have to feed into what we want. Let's look at those strategic minerals, which are critical for us, but are strategic for us because they will feed into our consumption and produce jobs for the young people, produce innovation, and uh, and, and and we lift our uh, into African trade from where we are trading around 16% now to at least 40, 50 in the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And bringing it back to where we are right now, Africa's Green Economy Summit, we are currently just approaching the end of the summit. Um, and so I'm interested to know what important discussions do you think will be held this week or are you uh, hoping to, to have held this week? Well, the whole uh, objective of this summit was very important. It was localization of industrialization and attracting investment and bringing manufacturing back home. When you look at the rest of the world, China was doing the same. They, they, they attracted manufacturing into their territory. They sent their young people to go out and get blueprints, come back and manufacture phones for us. Uh, America is doing the same thing. Everybody is looking within to produce for them. So Africa is, needs to look at that. We, how can we produce for ourselves? So localization of industries. And uh, Africa is huge. It's 55 member states. And that's where the challenge is. But we need to have leaders and followers. Even the rest of the world has leaders and followers. We have G7s and G20. So here in Africa, we also have to have a G5 or a G20, so whereby leading countries support the uh, upcoming ones and work together through regional value chains. So localization of manufacturing, uh, attracting investment into this, but bring it green. Uh, we don't have to now go back to where the rest of the world did. They have just made the presentation that you can fit 18 countries of the world into Africa, including China, USA, uh, India, Japan, Mexico, and all these. These are developed countries, New Zealand. And when you look at the combined GDP of the 18 countries, 54, 58 trillion USD in nominal terms, Africa's GDP is only 3 trillion. The GDP of California, that can't be of pride to us. We need to increase GDP. To increase GDP, we have to look at investment, and we have the investment within. We cannot say there is no investment, but we have to f put those investments where we need to strategically remove those barriers, like in energy. And once you reduce the cost of energy, a lot of manufacturing will, re will relocate to Africa because we still have skilled labor that doesn't have jobs. So you'll have a lot of relocation of industries coming f even from China, India, America, because we'll produce cheaper and we'll consume them. Mm. And how do you think we can accelerate investment here in Africa? Oh, that is fantastic. We have resources. Mm. Uh, we, we have uh, our, our minerals. We have everything. Every, we have what the rest of the world wants. And the rest of the world has what we want. So how do we attract it to come here is by focusing on putting an environment that an attract and that's why I'm so proud of this uh, this summit because I've known about uh, Atlantis uh, which was having a lot of issues now they have put a green economic zone there uh, we have West Crow we have others coming up these are examples that can be replicated anywhere and once you replicate them anywhere if every city on the continent can replicate what Cape Town is doing then investments would come mm. yeah the money is there Mm. And we have the money because Africa is actually losing a lot of money in, in, in its financial flows. People don't pay tax. So we need to, 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 to capture that money and then it will stay on the continent. Mm. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Frank. My Speaking pleasure. to you has been inspirational and really eye-opening to Africa's potential. Yeah, yeah. And I hope it has been too for you viewers out there who can share your thoughts in the comment section down below. And you can make sure to like and subscribe to see more content like this. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.